those who become are those who never settle. They know that there is always a better and greater version. Knowledge of the average believer, and I thought to bring this down home also to help us. Seeing and knowing that you're excelling in this kingdom is primarily predicated on the level of spiritual enlightenment that you have. Listen carefully. The Bible says that the God of this world has a principal assignment to blind the minds of people. So that they are ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Are we together? Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. The prophet lamented and said, My people, speaking by the Spirit, are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Not lack of knowledge of what they want, but lack of knowledge of what it takes. Listen carefully. Most people know what they want, but you need to know what it takes to bring forth what you want. You want a life of peace. You want a life of glory. You want a life of beauty. You want a life of excellence. You want a life of ever increasing manifestation of God's power. Your needs are not new to you. But the Bible says my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Knowledge of what? Knowledge of the requirements. What it takes to actualize what you desire. And it says, because thou hast rejected knowledge. Anything rejected means it was offered you. And then for whatever reason, you were able to reject it. And God will respect your right to choose. But there are consequences when you reject knowledge. Can I tell you this? I was talking to the school of ministry students. We had a brief session yesterday. And I was encouraging them. Your life will not change just by default. Your life will not change just because you are a Christian in theory. It is going to require you having understanding, thorough knowledge and understanding of the ways of God. Thorough knowledge and understanding of the principles of the kingdom. Then on the strength of the knowledge and the understanding that you have, Listen carefully. You now obtain grace. The grace to do. The grace to walk in keeping. Very simple in theory. So any area of my life that is not working. Look up please. Any area of my life where I am not obtaining results. The Bible mandates that the first thing I do is to go for knowledge. Don't take action in ignorance. You will only recycle pain in your life. Action in ignorance only recycles pain. Action in ignorance only recycles pain. The first thing you need to do is to camp with God and get high level spiritual illumination. John 1 verse 5. And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Many of you have heard me give this revelation. It is powerful how light works. Look up please. A room that has been dark for 10 years. A room that has been dark for 2 weeks. A room that has been dark for 1 hour. A room that has been dark for 5 minutes. If you switch on the light in all the rooms, they will answer to light, the light at the same frequency. The room that has been dark for one year will not say, no, I, I need time because I've been dark for long. No. That means that even if you have been in darkness for 10 years, the moment light comes, the result and the dominion power of light is instant. Very powerful revelation. That you have dwelt in darkness for a very long time. 
and then the light of God's word comes in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. You can be sure that this reign of darkness has gone forever. Whether it is in the area of your spiritual work, in the area of finances, in the area of your influence, kingdom, service, whatever it is. That means if people do not make progress with their life, their retrogression, more than being traceable to demons, is traceable to the dominion power of darkness. Darkness creates stagnation. Listen carefully. Darkness creates stagnation. Darkness grounds a man at the same position. And I've told you that time does not change anything. Time only reveals. It takes access to light. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. Arise, shine, prophesy to yourself, say arise. One more time, shout it, say arise. It says arise, shine. Why? For your light is come, not your light is around. It has always been there. Isn't it amazing that what can lift a man in one moment has always been there. But the day it comes to you, the day it comes to you, that is the day you arise and you shine. For the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Now, please listen to me. There is no overemphasizing the need for believers to pay attention to spiritual illumination. It is the only bailout system out of the darkness of this world. Look up, please. Many of us come from families where no one has been able to rise beyond a certain level. Is that true? Many of us have come from families ravaged by all kinds of demonic things, yokes, curses, all sorts of things. Some of you are not even aware of the full extent of the evil that surrounds your life and the territory there. Your immunity is the word of God. Now the challenge with many believers is that the moment they get born again, they just start going to church religiously, just doing church as we know it, religiosity, and then they never pay attention to grow. And for many reasons, I think there are a number of reasons why people don't grow. Number one, they think they are still young. The first reason why people do not contend for passion to grow is because someone else is giving a harvest to a seed you are not sowing. So because you always receive a harvest whether you are sowing or not, it gives you a justification that there is still time. Lamentation chapter 3 and I think it's verse 27. It says it is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. This is my recommendation that you use time for your advantage. Many people do not contend for spiritual growth or growth in every area of their life because you see, once people are growing up, the responsibility of parenthood demands that you are there for your child while he's growing financially and otherwise. And chances are that just because there's someone giving you money, there's someone paying, uh, you, can, you can make all kinds of mistakes and there are people shouldering it for you. You may not have been exposed to see the full effect of not understanding or not having high level spiritual illumination. Can I tell you, this is why many young men become utterly frustrated the moment they are left alone. Because they have been shielded for many years. They don't know which result came from their faith and which one came from the covering on them. So for many years, the gentleman is not fasting, he's not praying, he's not studying the word of God, he's not serious. Yet he's increasing financially, yet doors are opening for him. Then the day you are now exposed and you have to stand by your own faith, you will find out you are still a baby Christian. You were only leaning on the shoulder of parents. I found out that the first reason people do not want to grow in life is because they have been covered and shielded from seeing the effect that lack of growth brings to their lives. Is God speaking to someone already? Yes. Why should I be faithful in keeping financial principles, for instance, for my increase and my lifting? When I have maybe some pocket money coming, when I have some money coming from some loved one, 
whether I pray or not is coming. So when we are teaching things about favor, when we are teaching things about diligence, chances are that that message will not really mean anything to you. You just say amen when everybody is saying amen. But somebody who knew where he came from, hallelujah, that person will easily receive. Can I tell you, there is a measure of pain that is a blessing because pain sometimes has a way of creating passion. Don't be too quick to stop pain in people. Listen to me. Not just I'm not just talking of demonic oppression. There is a pain factor that can wake people up in life. The prodigal son, it was pain that woke him up. The Bible says he came to himself. Not that the Holy Ghost spoke to him. Not that the Spirit spoke to him. Pain can make men come to themselves. Study your Bible. No, I will study one day. And then one day... The person who becomes your principal breadwinner now says, from today, I'm not helping you again. Two weeks of utter frustration. By yourself, you will look for a forest to pray. By yourself, you will create all the excuses. It is raining. It is too hot. There is a pain factor that can go and close you somewhere. That night, without strings, without keyboard, you will do the praise and worship by yourself. You will pray by yourself. Most people in our generation have been too pampered to become powerful too pampered to become powerful you are lazy spiritually people give excuses you know the way these people are the way life you are so busy and we continue to receive all kinds of justification discipline yourself and buy books i won't buy books my daddy said he will buy me books you see that kind of thinking so time is going and the things you should have learned with the gift of time given to you time is passing but the corresponding knowledge is not coming please listen to what i'm teaching you tonight it's a very very powerful teaching it is good for a man that he bear his yoke in his youth when there, and there are people, respectfully speaking, there are parents who when they are fasting, they tell the children, don't fast, you are too small. But demons don't say the children are too small to possess them. A little child of five years old can kill ten people before they deliver him. And you ask the child, who did you kill? He will start mentioning he had that level of skill. And yet to fast, even if he's six to twelve, is a problem. What of morning devotion? Or night devotion, whichever one. Devotion, that's the most important thing. Many people, you are laughing. Many people are not serious with God. Don't sit down and expect results from an investment you did not make spiritually. No, sir. God is a just God. There are people today, the only time they open their Bible is when they come to church. And now that we have electronic platforms like this, some don't even open it at all. everything do it for me everything do it for me so a sense of responsibility zero spirituality zero everything zero can i tell you the truth there is a requisite level of investment in knowledge you will need to build capacity for the days that come I have been warning people for a very long time. Jesus said, I will have, I will walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. For the night cometh when no man will walk again. You don't have the time, all the time. No. For instance, for instance, when, if you are a young man who came from a family where there is a divide as to spirituality, By the time you are on campus and you are in school, that is an opportunity to build your life. Because ordinarily at home, they may not allow you to pray that prayer. Now you keep wasting your time. We have a social social, social center and all these things. Hundred level. Time is passing. God is watching. Your destiny is also watching. Two hundred level. Some of your colleagues who may never be allowed to pray. Do you know there are some of you, if you were at home, you will never be allowed to go to certain meetings. You will not be allowed to carry out certain spiritual exercises. God now brought you out of your family using the guise of school. 
so that he can give you five years to build the capacity that your destiny needs but many people continue to waste their time and i tell you the spirit of the waster is alive especially in this our arrogant generation time is going now you are in 400 level for instance the only thing you know is what they taught you in class relationship zero you have not you have not had friends you've not made friends godly friends that can become a ladder for your destiny and the holy spirit keeps warning you people invite you for strategic programs you don't care because in your mind i have an uncle in nmpc or an uncle in a shell he promised me that as soon as i finish i will get a job and then just when you are writing your final year, he will relocate to Canada. Woe to him that puts his strength in a man. Please pay attention. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you again. There are some of you, God disguised, he brought you to Zaria to come and stay maybe with a family to walk or to learn certain things. And you may be wondering, God, but why didn't you take me to Lagos and other places? God is saying, you are only here for three years. Use that three years well. This three years is the answer to the prayer that you've prayed in one prayer and fasting and said, Lord, I want to have a great destiny. In these three years, maximize the time. There are people who encountered God in their spillover year. It was in that frustration they were strolling around like madmen around their various campuses and the Holy Ghost landed upon them. And they now said, Lord, thank you that I have a few more weeks to stretch it out in destiny. Everybody say knowledge. Can I tell you, my first assignment for you tonight is can you list the five people who are currently wasting your time and wasting your destiny right now? I'm not saying write it, list it in your mind. Five things, the five top things that are wasting your time and wasting your destiny and not allowing you to access the kind of knowledge that you need. For some of us, it may be movies and media and social media. For some of us, it may be friends. For some of us, it may be laziness and jealousness. Oh, I don't have money. One day God led you to a fellowship where they shared free books. Five keys to building your faith. You looked at the person who wrote it and said, look at this guy. There's nothing faith on him. And you dropped the book. Instead of you to open up your spirit and learn. Somebody who has four over ten, you who has zero, who is better? So when I tell you this, our generation is arrogant, I know what I'm saying. People who have no results, but they are the ones who sit down vetting the performance of those who are at least doing something. Someone who is trying and praying for one hour, you whose prayer life is under attack, what gives you the credence to talk about that person's prayer life?